Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today in our webinar. I believe today is the 29th webinar that we've been doing together. Uh, thank you as well to Salak that made this happening. Um, today, we're going to talk about three important topics. We're going to talk who's the notary, public notary in Spain, what he could do for us. We're going to talk about who and what uh, function is of a lawyer, what is a lawyer, how could you identify a lawyer, and um, what kind of work he does, and the importance of using independent lawyers. And on, as a third thing, we're going to talk about a subject very popular in our blog, uh, Michael's blog, about self-proclaimed uh, legal advisors, uh, how to identify um, and then we're going to have a session of questions and answer as we usually do. Uh, we would like to introduce today and a very special guest, um, our public notary in Javier, uh, Juan Luis Millet. He's a public notary uh, that his office is located nowadays in Havia. Um, he's got a very good experience. He's going to tell us a little bit about the international situation, how the client approached the notary, how the lawyers uh, deal with him, and how he could be of help. On the other hand, we've got uh, Pedro Heredia, international lawyer uh, from the Javier office. Um, he, he works for Pedro Heredia, Alicante lawyers. And we just went to the south in Andalusia. We've got our friend, Michael Davis, uh, a lawyer as well, international lawyer, based over there. And um, he will tell us a bit about his experience during these uh, 20, over 25 years of experience. Okay, so not going much further now, I would like to pass the word over to Juan Luis, which is a pleasure that he took the time to join us today and give the expert community a little bit of light on this topic. Over to you, Juan Luis. Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you very much. And also thank you to Pedro and Michael to give me the opportunity today to give a brief resume about what we do, the notaries in Spain. Spanish notaries, we are public officers. That means we are named by the state to work in certain areas based on the population and the economical incomes of that region. So it's not a free work you can set in every place. It is set by the state who can work in different towns. The way to access to the notary work here in Spain as public officers, it needs first to have a law degree, being European citizen, and after that, pass the exams. The exams are basically uh, based on private law matters, civil law, companies law, hypotech or land registry law, and a little bit of taxation and administrative processal court law. Well, once you pass the exams that it takes an average of six to seven years after the law degree, you apply for one place and start to work as a notary. What the notaries do? Well, we are one of the main parts of what we call the safe security law system in Spain, or what we say seguridad jurídica. That means the document, what we produce, that it's called the notary deed or escritura pública, it has based on the law, certain, certain and strong legal effects. The date that it cannot be mm, misinterpreted, the veracity or trueness about what the parts declare on the notary deed, and the legal effects. All these main characters makes the notary deed a a special way to, once you have a conflict, receive from the court and quite a easy way to be recognize your rights instead of the private contracts, which ones you need 
to prove them in front of the court through other ways. And as I've said before, the matters we study to pass the, uh, the exams, in certain way, focus the future of our job, that it is fundamentally what affects the person in his life. What I say, what, what, I, what can I mean, or what I mean when I said his or her life? Well, once you become mature, you can start a business, so you need to start a company. And to start a company, you need to have, if you, well, if you're well advised by lawyers, of course, eh, you need to have an authority about the constitution of the company. Team. To be registered in the company's house, that constitution of the company, it needs to be in a public deal. And all matters related with the company, like the change of address, selling or buying or shares, move the address, any subject extension of capital related with the company will pass through an notary deed. But the normal person may don't understand or don't start the business. And well, they need to set a tranquility or relax for the future and would like to make a, a will. We, the notaries, are part of one of the wills kind in the civil law, what we call the open will that it's through a notary. There are other words, all other ways of wills, but that one is the most used in Spain because it is advised by the notary and it will be, it will be always in our files. One thing quite important, once you get older, maybe you don't remember where you have left your will or which dispositions you said. And that matches with the inheritance, another field of work for the notaries. Of course, we deal with the inheritance, keeping the wills and making an inventory of the assets and according to the will, or if there is no will, according to the law that the deceased will rule in their inheritance, which ones will benefit from that inheritance. All right, but move to something not so uh, sad, like, that is like purchasing a property. Well, to purchase a property, there are so many things involved that my first advice is look for a legal expert. Mostly if you came from abroad. Since the moment you fell in love with a property until the day you enter with your keys in that property, you need someone to work with. And that someone, for me, it's of course a lawyer. Once you have get that advice, then you start to set certain things that we will check in the notary the day you will sign the purchase deed. That is, it is the property free of any charge, there are any mortgages, is properly measured, the constructions are properly described. Are they legally described? May the seller sell to me with no later on problems? Or could the buyers being foreign can buy the property in the way they would like? All these things are checked by us and will provide a notary deed who could be registered in the land registry. These are the main two activities that th pass through the life of the citizens. But there are more other ones that I, won't, I would like to make these things longer. But just to tell you an example, we can make weddings, divorces. Also, if you need the legal proof to use in front of the court about any subject of the outside world. I have a neighbor who passed through my fence. Someone is making terrible noise every night. All these proofs, you can use a notary for that. And well, I think this is a quite good starting to explain what the Spanish notary do. Thank you very much, Juan Luis. I think it's been a pleasure uh, to listen to your explanation in English. Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, you give us all these little bits of advice. 
and you try to uh, provide uh, the expert community um, all this uh, good advice. Now, Juanfran, uh, Juanfran is going to show us now uh, a video about, as Juan Luis said, buying a property in Spain uh, is very important. And just uh, one minute, and um, you will get it now in front of you. Juanfran, cuando quieras. <laughs> Buying a property in Spain. There are many reasons to purchase a property in Spain. The climate, the food, the culture, or simply to enjoy life. If you already see yourself buying the house of your dreams in the Mediterranean, it is important to be cautious and follow a series of steps. First, prepare a budget and take into account all the possible expenses. Remember to add transfer tax or VAT to the sale price, as well as legal fees, notary fees, and land registry fees. And even if it was love at first sight, do not rush or sign anything. The most important thing, especially if you're not yet a Spanish resident, is to hire an independent lawyer, a specialist who speaks your language and solely defends your interests. Together, you can review the characteristics of the house, should it have pending charges, negotiate a mortgage with the banks, and you will always be up to date throughout the whole process. But most importantly, fall in love with your property and do things by the book. Your new life starts there. Payether and Aretia, International Lawyers. Okay, thank you, Juan Fran. Um, very good advice as well from, from the video. And um, we always insist on uh, appointing independent lawyers. We have here uh, two independent lawyers, uh, uh, Pedro Heredia uh, and then Michael Davis, who will give us a little bit of light about uh, how important it is to use one. And especially as Juan Luis said about buying a property in Spain. Um, Pedro, uh, how to identify one what a lawyer could do for you, uh, what lawyers do. Over to you, Pedro. Okay, well, thank you, Ignacio, uh, for the invitation. And well, just to also thank you, uh, uh, Juan Luis, uh, in order to uh, show us, which is, uh, of course, uh, um, the notary um, position in Spain, which I always uh, explain to clients, uh, how, what important is a notary in Spain? Of course, it's been said about all the purchase transactions to complete the, the purchase of a property, making wills, inheritance, company, um, a divorce, uh, weddings, and, and many documents that we need in order to show and prove uh, whenever we want to go to court. Uh, uh, so those transactions, which is the most important transactions, I would say in, in Spain, uh, this is why one uh, the notaries are one of the legal pillars in the legal system in Spain, I would say. So this is why it's really important that they are very qualified and it's been a, a, um, a pleasure having Juan Luis here in order to explain us um, um, what a notary makes in Spain and why it's so important in, in Spain. Of course, as it's been said by, by Juan Luis, it is um, also important in a transaction and in many of the things in order to, to, to instruct and expertise um, on legal matters in, in many ways, of course, on buying a property in Spain, especially when you are uh, abroad, you don't have a system, you don't know how things work. So it's, it's a, I would say it's a must also to instruct uh, someone in order to accompany you, to help you uh, uh, um, in order to, of course, to revise all the documents that are required in order to buy a property in Spain uh, from charges, uh, land registry, which is uh, also any other thing that may happen, of course, in the municipality, let's say planning report, uh, catastrophe to revise at the end, everything about the transaction to complete and write and advise and revise uh, the purchase private contract um, uh, or the reservation contract with the, with the agent or with the, with the seller. I mean, all those things are important in order to inform the buyer, inform uh, taxes, uh, tax situation, tax consequences about purchasing a property. Uh, in order to have everything duly prepared, everything brought into a notary office to complete the transaction. Uh, as the transaction is completed in a notary office and in the notary office is when the buyer becomes ownership, becomes the owner 
of the property in Spain. And of course, it's, it's, it's duly important in order to instruct, uh, I mean, uh, a lawyer, as it's been said by, by Ignacio, in those, in these phases and the previous phases before completing uh, and buying a property in, in Spain. Uh, um, get, get, get back to you, Ignacio. I don't know if this has been answered properly. Thank you, Pedro. Very good. It's good because you, you, you left some questions as well for, for Michael. Uh, hello, Michael. Uh, now we're going to talk as well about lawyers in Spain, how to identify uh, legal advice, court representation, the importance of using an independent lawyer. Um, and then obviously, later on, Michael will discuss about the self-proclaimed legal advisor who has been informed that these articles are very popular uh, on, the, on, our, on our website. So uh, over to you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio, and thank you, Juan Luis, for joining us, uh, joining us today. Whoops. <laughs> it's great to hear a, a notary speaking such good English. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. OK. Um, well, what can I say? The first thing about uh, notaries in Spain is uh, they are a pillar of our system. And when I speak to uh, uh, solicitors in the UK, they are always extremely uh, uh, jealous of our system, uh, uh, our, of our inheritance system, especially when it comes to the wills. Because in England, we don't, they don't have, uh, it's not obligatory to register the wills that are, that are signed in, in front of a couple of witnesses. There's no centralized system. So in the UK, it's very, very uh, normal to be halfway through an inheritance through probate and another will appears in, in granny's uh, drawer and all sorts of problems uh, arise that here in Spain, we don't normally have because of course in Spain, 99.9% .9 of wills, to not say 100%, because in practice probably it's almost 100% of wills are signed in at, in front of a notary. The notary will automatically register the will in the central register. And basically when somebody dies, we request the certificate from the central register. And if no will appears, we basically all assume simply that the will doesn't exist. And that is more or less how it, uh, it, actually, how it actually happens in reality. So it's a great, great advantage and the notaries are a, are a, a great part of that, uh, of that uh, uh, improved system in respect to the, the English one. Um, and the other things that uh, Alice were mentioning, I mean, notaries in Spain intervene in almost all important transactions. Um, the ones that we've already said, the wills, the inheritance, the company formation, marriage, and all sorts of things. What the English people are not so aware of is because most English people, when they come over to Spain, they, they buy a property, so there's a conveyancing, so they meet the notary, uh, so that, that they know they do. But the fact that notaries can help you with a court case by proving certain circumstances, like uh, Juan Luis uh, indicated before, if you have uh, uh, a problem with a neighbor and you need to establish where the boundary is, you can hire the notary to go around to that place, take some photographs, and whatever he says is the situation and establishes the situation or takes the photos, and certifies that that is what he saw, all the judges in Spain will take that as the honest truth. Uh, that, is, uh, that is the reality. Uh, so they, they can be uh, very important. The other thing is, is that you can always manifest something in front of a notary for use in court, and you can manifest whatever you want. And the notary will give proof that it was you who made that manifestation on that specific uh, day. And then that manifestation can then be used wherever it is, uh, is necessary. It doesn't, the notary just is not saying that that content is true, but he's saying that you, you and you yourself uh, uh, made that manifestation. And that is uh, sometimes very important uh, for court cases. Um, I think the other thing you mentioned was what the, um, the people that are sort of offering legal advice without being uh, lawyers, is that what you were? Uh... Yeah, I, that's yeah. important. Uh, this problem has uh, got better recently since the credit crunch. Because there's a saying in, uh, in English, I think it's something like, um, only when the tide goes out, you can see who is swimming nude. Hmm. Well, after the last credit crunch, <laughs> a lot of people that were using non-lawyers or half lawyers as they, as they call them, they don't really exist, uh, found themselves without bank guarantees on stage payments and all sorts of other, other difficult situations. So a lot of the so-called legal advisors have uh, disappeared and it doesn't seem to be as problematic as it was uh, during the property boom. 
Um, there may still be the odd one, but I don't actually know, know of any at the, at the moment. But uh, they'll, probably, they'll probably bounce back again when the market, if the market is strong for a few years, they're uh, running. And I think uh, that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Michael. Very good. Uh, as Michael said, and Pedro, it's very important uh, that people need to identify um, a, a lawyer to represent their interest. I mean, it's important to become interest, and we insist on saying so, because it could be a lot of conflict of interest. So people buying a property in, in Spain will come here, will just, to, uh, as one we said, um, choose the property of their life, uh, of their dreams, and, and then you start having the issues. And it's very important. The first thing I will recommend you to do, appoint an independent lawyer who will look after your interest. Um, as Michael just said, um, there are self-proclaimed legal advisors. Now, it's very important when you hear there is a legal advisor, it's important to ask what career they have, because I, I think that's important, uh, because depending on that, you will know whether he's being registered at the law society or not. And obviously, is a difference. As the notary, the, the public notary um, study law as lawyers, obviously, and they beat later on as Juan Luis said, to have this extra degree and to become public, okay? Now, the self-proclaimed legal advisors, some people say they're legal advisors with not even title, and that could be very dangerous for your interest. Um, uh, over um, 20 years of experience already, I'm sure uh, Juan Luis, uh, Pedro, and Michael, and myself, we went through a lot of experience of problems that could have been avoided. The whole point uh, here, is to inform yourself, ask, uh, and even in the blog, I, I think Michael could share now uh, the link, um, uh, how to identify one, just ask around, just uh, um, check with the um, English speaking embassy as well, what is the list of recommended lawyers, um, reputation, uh, et cetera, et cetera, but very important that they work for you. Now, um, we're going to go um, into questions and answers. Um, I would like to, uh, I don't know if Pedro would like to add anything about uh, what lawyers do through the courts, because public notaries yeah. are doing all this uh, legal work in their office and give faith of any legal act. But on yeah. the other hand, we've got the lawyers who could obviously prepare all these um, transactions so the notary could give faith and then the lawyers could represent as well clients in court. Uh, Pedro, could you please explain a little bit yeah. what will be the work for barristers in this respect, please? I mean, um, as barristers, as you mean uh, correctly saying, um, public documents have a, a special power in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the court. I mean, uh, when I mean a special power, it's a, a public deed when it's been duly identified by a notary and as he's been said, one of the pillars is there is verification or on the identification of the object who is declaring in a public deed. There is no um, arguments, really arguments against uh, those documents um, in order to say that is false or not. There is no uh, argument against that. And, and the content, uh, if it's really and well explained, the content uh, will be interpreted correctly. So uh, public documents have a special power in court as it's been said by a notary, there is no discussion. Let's say that if it has been said by a notary and it has been duly said and declared and by parties in, 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 the, in the notary, there is no discussion. Um, uh, many, many documents, of course, um, um, could be applied to a notary in order to be brought to a, to a, to a court. Um, in, in many ways, um, I'm, I'm sure Juarez will give us details of some examples. I mean, when people discuss or when there's an accident uh, where something you need to show and prove about any damage in any way or any situation uh, in a family which is happening, um, of course, a proof made by an notary with pictures and the place is being there, the time, the day, the data, and, and with some pictures and description uh, will give us the situation that in the future, whenever the court hearing comes, and of course, that situation has been amended. Uh, it will be verified and proved that that situation happened accordingly to the interest, accordingly to the application that you're doing in the court. And public documents, let's say a public deed, 
and um, a will or any public domain has a special power, as I said. It's, um, it's a situation where there is, um, um, uh, there is no discussion on verifying what is happening. For example, a private document is being signed by parties, but could happen that some party says, no, I didn't sign that, or I didn't, uh, that, that signature is not mine, whatever. In a notary deed, in a public deed, that things are uh, extremely decreased to the minimum or, or, or doesn't appear. I mean, there's no discussion on that. Mm -hmm. It's a public document that also has a benefit in case that, uh, for example, there's a declaration that someone uh, has a, a loan or has a, is borrowing some money from someone, uh, the lender will be able to execute and, and without any discussion in court, uh, will go against the assets of the, of the borrower. Um, this is just an example of how, how important are the, the public documents uh, and public deeds in, in the scenario of a, uh, of a legal system in Spain, in one of the pillars, as been said also by Michael, of a legal system in Spain. Wills, <clears throat> also, uh, I would say that 99.99% uh, of the wills are made in a notary. Every single client that comes to my office, I always say, uh, because some of them sometimes say, well, I would like to make it up privately here, but now I say, always do it in front of a notary because it's a must, it's gonna be registered and, and it's duly qualified notary as well as we are, but it's in a public deed and it's gonna be no discussion and no um, situation where it can be argued and, and will be brought into a court. So with this situation, we prevent totally uh, any uh, litigation uh, by parties or by someone who has made some interest in an a, in a, in a, in a inheritance. So this is why, uh, the public uh, um, position in the legal system in Spain is uh, is so important. It's, it's, a, it's a must and a need to understand why it is important. Of course, by the international clients that are coming to, to Spain uh, in order to know a little bit about our legal system. Thank you, Pedro. Very good. Now, I would like to pass over to Juan Luis, whether he would like to send any recommendation. He's been experiencing law from many years. Uh, he's in an excellent uh, location, which is called Javier. Uh, and I know he's been having international clients and he could see a big variety of issues. Uh, Juan Luis, will you give us some recommendations to, to the expat community that are willing to, to come over to Spain and what will be your tips of advice today? Over to you, Juan Luis. Thank you. Well, I was listening to all of you and I thought I would like to just hear what I said to one client they come last Monday. They wanted a personal meeting with me, not with the real estate agency or the designer. Well, okay, so we set the meeting and the first question they asked to me is, do you advise us to hire a lawyer? And I said, of course. And I continue, of course, because it's not only because of the poor taste of the property you're going to sign next Friday, whatever. It's because that is the starting point of your life in another country. That means you are not finishing with purchasing the property. Many things, happy things, or not so happy, will happen to you, to your loved ones, and you will need someone who will work with you. And for that, it's essential to look for a good professional. And there are many here who are well-prepared and with a lot of experience. What could happen? What I've seen in this, I'm gonna, in November, it will be 13 years since I arrived to work here in Javier. What happened is what I call, you face the zombies. <laughs> What's the zombies? Zombies are those deeds not properly advised, where it hasn't been measured properly. It hasn't been declared the swimming pool, parking places. They didn't think about the tax consequence about buying someone the life interest, another one the bird ownership. Many, many things that are not under our advice. We check them, 
But those things, if they are properly informed, they will never be a problem. So you will never have those zombies. Very good, very good advice, uh, Juan Luis. Um, that's, that's, I would like to pass over to, to Michael as well, if you could give us a hint on the tax advices as well, because a lot of law firms do tax work for residents and non-residents. Could you, Michael, please uh, tell us your experience on that? Uh, what is an accountant, a tax advisor? And then Pedro could tell us a little bit about Costa Blanca. Over to you, Michael. The microphone on, please. <laughs> Thank you. I should know by now. Uh, going on from what Juan Luis says, we, we see a, th a few zombies as well. In fact, I saw one today. Today, we had a client that um, had inherited uh, a very uh, expensive villa in, in Marbella. He had valued the, the property at a million, at a million euro uh, just four months ago. And um, sorry, he had valued, and yeah, just, just, just under, under a million he valued that because he, he'd heard that in Andalusia you don't pay an inheritance tax under a million. Uh, the fact is that you only pay, you, only, you, only, you get a deduction 99% above the million euro, but he didn't look at that. So he told the, he valued it at uh, just under a million, didn't pay an inheritance tax. And now he sold the property for 3 million euro. And he's very upset. <laughs> he's very upset because he he has to pay. Um, what was it? Is it twenty four percent of almost two million uh, uh, euro? So almost uh, four hundred something thousand euro. So he tells me that he wants to sue his his lawyer, the notary, and everyone involved. I explained that the notary is not his obligation to look into the prices as long as it's above the benchmark value, which is already low. And I would have a word with his lawyer to see what happened. I spoke to his lawyer and he said, Michael, this client came in and he lied to me. He told me that it was less than a million euro. The benchmark was only 700. So it wasn't for me to say that the property was it worth more or less. I've never seen it. And he didn't ask for evaluation. So I think that's one of the examples that people, uh, uh, well, that they have to find an independent lawyer to help them out because not, not everything is the job of, of, of the notary. The notary would have definitely, I think, at least, uh, would have mentioned it if he had seen a, a value that was so low that it was low below the benchmark values. But in this case, it was above the benchmark values. So uh, in this case, uh, there was a lawyer and it happened that he did do his job correctly. But of course, there are, there are other cases where you do see the solicitor has not advised the, the, the client correctly, or there's not enough confidence between them in this case to be able to advise him uh, correctly. So finding the, the lawyer, he has to be knowledgeable, he has to be independent. And at the end of the day, you have to, to a certain extent, put your life to a certain extent in his hands and, and, and trust your, your own lawyer, because normally it should be a long standing relationship from the moment you uh, move to Spain. Um, so I think that's sort of along the lines of what, you know, Pastor Juan Luis said as well. We, we've seen a few zombies. We've seen this zombie this morning, which I'm, I'm, I'm still reflecting on what, what, can be done, what can be done with his 400 and something thousand uh, euro tax bill. Yes. Okay, thank you, Michael. Pedro, uh, would you like to comment anything with regards to, as well, these kind of zombies or <laughs> any other issues? that we are facing on a daily basis in, in, in our law firm. Over to you, Pedro. Okay, I like, I like the word zombie. Of course, I've, I've seen many of them in, in, in the last 20 years in Alicante. And of course, it's something that uh, um, we cannot uh, uh, avoid. I mean, they are there. I mean, and, and of course, uh, uh, these uh, bad situations is what is happening at the end is, is provoking that uh, the ones who made who makes things by the book as we do uh, we are struggling in order to put things correctly to those people of course we have received many clients that come from uh, these zombies in order just to of course to um, to advise and properly and of course in some ways and and this this is serious for of course as even said by 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 michael um, um some clients apply to in order to to claim uh, negligence, negligence to 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 those to those uh, um, so-called advisors. Um, I like what it what we said about, of course, um, uh, purchase of a property um, is a 
uh, one of the, I would say, one of the main important investment in life, and whenever you come to Spain, it's one of the important uh, uh, um, things that, uh, in order to, to uh, come to Spain. But of course, there is linked, you know, also in um, tax issues, it's also linked in immigration issues, it's linked in your life, and it's good to say, it's been said, that is um, one of the main points or the study point to start viewing uh, which are going to be the legal consequences, which is going to be your situation, which is going to be the scenario um, on buying a property, on residence and taxes um, in order to start life in Spain. Or even you um, buy a property in Spain, buy an, uh, to, to rent it, to make, invest, to make an investment, to get some profit, which are going to be the tax consequences on that. Uh, if it's whether uh, better to do it in a one way or the other way, of course, it's, 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 a, it's a must, I'm going to say, uh, to instruct uh, uh, a lawyer and a tax advisor on those situations. Um, it's important. We always been said, uh, um, uh, Ignacio, we always discuss it and say it's, it's important, it's a must to do things by the book, to do things correctly, to be transparent with client, to be transparent um, and independent. Independent means that you just work with your client and by your client and to your client and you they defend the interest of your client, um, whatever uh, situation happens and investing in a property, it give us a, a high responsibility, liability. And this is why we do things in a, in a protocol, uh, taking every single point, every single corner of, of every single um, property, you know, they just to at the end, um, um, to put things easier, uh, to the client on the uh, uh, happy moment whenever they acquire the, the, the property of their life. And uh, at the end, we try to do things easy, give peace of mind, um, but making things by the book and not just uh, by, by instructed by one uh, uh, agent or just do things in, a, in a, an appropriate way. Thank you, Pedro. Very good advice. And, and as I remember, uh, and uh, you guys could remember as well, a lot of clients, when they come to the office with their problem, they said, I wish I didn't leave my brain on the airplane, on the airport. You know, these kind of comments that when they fall into a trap, they just start realizing that they start trusting uh, either one person or the other, and then um, the fraud was committed. And then they just... Uh, come to us to try to recover that money for either breach of contract or for uh, uh, criminal actions, which obviously is, is much, uh, there are high words here. So um, first advice, always try to appoint an independent lawyer. Why is that? Because the question you can make is, will you represent me in court if I've got a problem against the builder or against the agent? And if the answer obviously is yes, that means that is fully free of any conflict of interest. Um, as Michael stated as well, uh, an independent lawyer will always look after all kinds of guarantees like stage payments, bank guarantees, which at the moment are very, very important that if you're listening and you're a buyer to double check whether you've got bank guarantees, especially with situations such as credit crunch all this coronavirus crisis, which we really don't know how it's gonna turn out, whether how many companies are gonna go bankrupt and how protected is your money. This is certain things that you may, might look into it. And um, we've got some questions as well about what is a head store and what is a tax advisor? Well, a tax advisor could, uh, it could be an economist um, and it could be even a lawyer specialized on tax and um, and then a lot of law firms might have it within the firm or they could be independent. And a Hester is a different person who deals with paperwork and not necessarily need to be uh, that license uh, linked to a lawyer, okay? Uh, a Hester normally deals with easy paperwork uh, on a straightforward um, situation, for example, for Traffico, you will normally use a Hester. Uh, actually, we have our own Hester within the firm, okay? But a Hester will normally deal with just easy paperwork, but not advisor. 
Okay, so it's very important you understand, oh no, I've got my head start. Well, uh, it's very important for you to identify whether that head start uh, is qualified to give you advice. That's why it's important because otherwise you're the one who might suffer the lack of advice. So it's important for you to make clear all these things. Yeah. Now, um, we're trying to run out, we're starting to run out of time. And I know uh, Michael has something to say here before we start uh, giving all our details. Over to you, Michael. Yeah, nothing up there. I think the, the term that causes most of the confusion uh, is the term legal advisor. The term legal advisor is the, is the culprit of all the, of all the, of all the problems regarding uh, um, people hiring someone they think is a lawyer, not a lawyer, because the term legal advisor, people need to understand that it actually in Spain doesn't mean anything at all. In other words, you can say that you're a legal advisor and the law society may write a letter to them, but they don't really go very heavy on them unless they, they use the word abogado under their name, in which case they will be committing a, a criminal offence. So if you see the word abogado under their name, then there's 99% certainty that they will really be lawyers. If they say, just say legal advisor under their name, it's 99% that they won't be a lawyer, because otherwise they'd use the correct term, which would be lawyer, or abogado. Um, I think that's that's the important part because in the UK you can't just call yourself a legal advisor. In England you're not allowed to. You can't call yourself a legal advisor if you are not qualified to give legal advice. And in Spain you can do it and people seem to get away with it. So that's that's the dangerous one, legal advisor. Yeah, that's a very good point Michael because you're fully correct. It seems like it's an umbrella, a legal umbrella to call everybody a legal advisor. And, and then if you just scratch a little bit and say, okay, you're a legal advisor, but what title do you have? Mm. Uh, obviously the confusion, Michael, starts because in different countries, that's understood that legal advisor is linked to a title. Mm. But here, I just could say, well, if I wasn't a lawyer, I could say, oh, I'm, I'm advising, I'm legal I'm advisor. We've got a similar situation, um, uh, over here, Michael, as well, with translators. Um, mm -hmm. We have this problem because translator is what the word is. Is a translator, mm -hmm. but it's not advising. Now, um, could you please comment uh, a little bit about that? Because it's very, very delicate, Michael, because even in a will, when you use a translator, it's not advising, and then it's not doing tax planning. It's no, not no, doing... I mean, a translator can call themselves translators. The trouble is, is that there's, there's been a temptation by some translators, and it happened when there was a the booming property market when nothing went wrong for many, many years. Some companies that translated and do thing, do things correctly, we would hire them to translate at the notary to do different things. And suddenly they sort of morphed until they were calling themselves legal advisors. And then, then you'd call them to do a translation. They no longer want to do it. And they were charging fees uh, uh, similar to, to lawyers when there was actually no qualification or indemnity insurance uh, behind. As I say, in, from what we can see in under the fear, this problem isn't as bad anymore as, as, it, as it was. Um, I'll say it's because, because, though, because of the credit crunch that made a lot of them have to disappear because of all the problems they'd left uh, left after their, their bad work. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we've got um, uh, a question from Shirley Hunt. Shirley Hunt uh, is a very well-known uh, client of us. Uh, it seems she might be buying a property in the future. And, um, and she's asking here, um, when we eventually purchase my house, can I ask uh, the purchaser, um, um, choose which notary can I go to? Pedro, could you, would you like to answer to, to Shirley whether she could choose, uh, whether it's her right to choose the notary? Okay, well, uh, thank you, Shirley, for the question. I mean, of course, we have a notary here which will be uh, adding uh, the answer. Um, let's put the two scenarios in the scenario where you sign a private contract in, in some ways and sometimes. Um, I would say that in private contracts, it is being said specifically that the parties or has chosen a notary in which municipality, and also in sometimes it is being said the name. For example, today I have uh, rewrite a contract. Uh, I have sent it to the to the to the to the seller lawyer and to my client, which is buying the property, and we have chosen in this case Juan Luis as the notary, which is going to be um, dealing and completing and revising all the documents in order to complete the purchase in in um, in a notary mm -hmm. so we have chosen specifically 
um, which not only really is being uh, designated by parties. Uh, the buyer um, in some ways has the power in order to choose uh, the notary. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put another example, another scenario. When you buy a new property, there's a consumer's right, a consumer's right who chose the notary, and you have the right to choose the notary appropriate to you. Of course, with some circumstances, I, I presume that police will be able to add more things about this. But uh, if you are, the, for example, a building, a notary, a building which is being built in, in Alicante or in, in, say, in Almeria, at the end, you're gonna, you will have to choose an appropriate notary in the area where the property is being built. Is being built. So the right of the buyer in order to choose the notary is uh, is there. Uh, parties can agree in order to to choose. In this case, it's individual parties, uh, private parties, not a company, not a seller, as a as a developer, but the individual parties in order to agree, which is notary. And in those cases, I presume that will be. Um, um, the buyer side, the one who has the right in order to choose the notary. And of course, parties can also agree which is going to be the cost uh, of the notary. Um, in no, in, in mo I would say in most of the cases, it's been said uh, that the cost of a notary is, by, is paid by the buyer, by the purchaser, but also sometimes can be, see, can be seen in, in, in some templates, in some contracts that is, uh, is, is accordingly too low. Mm? And accordingly to law, uh, both parties uh, contribute in order to pay uh, the notary fees. Okay, thank you, Pedro. We're running out of time. Uh, uh, Juan Luis, would you like to add anything to uh, Shirley Hunt's comment? And uh, where are you based and how can they find you? Over to you, Juan Luis. Well, uh, Pedro said perfectly. Um, is the one who pays the fees, the one who chooses the notary. It's mm -hmm. so simple. You pay the notary fees, you have the right to choose the notary. And it's said by the Reglamento Notarial. So it is written in a principle of articles. And there is only one exception, the one Pedro said. If there is a lack of connection point, you are a builder, you build in Alicante, you are a buyer, I live in Javier, I cannot force the builder to come to Javier even if I pay the fees because there is no connection point between where the property is, Alicante, where the seller is. Okay, I pay the fees, but I live abroad. It's the same if, for example, in Javier builds a Valencia's builder, they cannot take the clients to Valencia. They should sign in Javier. Very good advice, Juan Luis. Um, Juan Luis, could you write in the chat um, the name of, if possible, the name of uh, where to find you, where is your notary office, or if you don't manage, probably Juan Frank could write it down. So well, they... We, uh, we have a website. It's not very updated, so... <laughs> My apologies about what you will find, but www notaria javier millet m i l l e t yes. dot e s right so is 3w notaria javier millet dot e s perfect very good now um um i would like to ask the same question michael would you like to add anything and how can they find you um, if they need to contact you, Michael? Well, I think regarding where, where you sign, I think uh, Pedro and Juan have already explained it perfectly. So Juan Luis, so I think that's, uh, that's that. Well, the only thing I'd say about that is that there, there is some abuse in these, uh, in these subjects, of course. Um, sometimes we have a builder. I had, one, I had one just two weeks ago. The builder is, is building in Ben Almadena and uh, there was like 70 flats that had to be signed and I could choose between insisting on my own notary in Marbella next to my office or to all go down to Malaga and, and sign it there. But if I wanted to sign it in Marbella, I'd have to wait three weeks for the signing. Well, if I signed it at their notary, I could sign it three weeks before. So my client told me I had to go and sign, sign in in Malaga. So clearly it was an abuse and I wasn't, there was about five solicitors and we were all sitting there waiting to sign all these title deeds the same day. 
and they were all, all the solicitors, they were from Marbella and every, everyone was complaining, but that, it's just the way, <laughs> the way it works out sometimes. Uh, regarding where we are, we're, um, we have offices in, in Marbella, that's in the, the center of the town, uh, in Armoria City, and in uh, and in Mahaka. In other words, we're all in the in the Andalusia in the Andalusia region. This is where. That's, that's very good. Thank you, Michael. I must. Uh, uh, one, one very short thing. May yes, I? of course, Juan Luis. Go on. Just to to let you know, all of you, maybe you are aware, or maybe you don't. Notaries are terri uh, territorially organized, like the comunidades autónomas, and in every region or comunidad autónoma, there is a chamber of notaries called Colegio Notarial. In all the 17 colegios notariales from Spain, 17 comunidades autónomas, there is an special service for that kind of abuses. Ah. Mm. So you can reach in Andalucía. Oh, really? Ah. And I know the Colegio de Andalucía works very well. Mm -hmm. And they will answer you and we'll contact the builder to explain them what ah. he's doing could be against the notaries he is choosing. Mm -hmm. Very good. And very, very good. And this is also in Valencia, well, in all communities. Yes. Ah, very good. That's great advice, Juan Luis. <laughs> um, that's excellent. Any extra uh, advice uh, with regards to, to the the, these, the Law Society of Notaries, uh, Juan Luis, anything else you would like to tell them? Well, as you say, it's a society quite well organized and you could <laughs> be surprised how can they help you in very different matters, different uh, difficult times, if you need to prove in a Sunday or, or difficult um, subjects, uh, feel pressed by big companies, the chamber of notaries of every region, they are really to help the citizens and of course, the lawyers. Thank you very much, Juan Luis. And, and, and I appreciate your words because actually, I don't know if, uh, if it happens to any of you, but we went to a difficult experience sometimes where uh, uh, the client is from a city, uh, the, the, the public notary, um, was not very much involved with international law and, 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 and situations about making wills. Uh, I remember a situation he rejected to, to go personally to the residency to sign a will. So we had to contact these uh, notary society to help us. And I must admit, they were very efficient when I sent the email asking for help, because obviously somebody needs a notary and the notary is the only one who could uh, make public a will and is a very crucial and important document for them and their beneficiaries and we cannot play with this subject so I, I managed to accept I had to do it I had to complain and I must admit that the delegate straight away contact me to give me solutions and option so it was excellent qualities so thank you for reminding that uh, Pedro uh, would you like to tell us a little bit extra that we miss where are you based what are your details? Uh, over to you, Pedro. Okay, well, well um, I'm one of the partners of PIT Heredia, and uh, we work in Costa Blanca. The headquarter is in Alicante City, but we have um, uh, offices in, in different towns from uh, south in Ciudad Quesada to the north, where I'm, I am right now in Javea, this spectacular uh, municipality, this spectacular city with a fantastic uh, 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 views, uh, caves, uh, beach. I mean, it's, 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 I would say it was one of the best areas I've ever seen in, in, in all the world, really. Javier is a fantastic uh, place. And I assume that many clients that come here at the end, they, they, they fall in love to, to this area, to Marina Alta in general and Javier in, in particular. Um, of course, um, just to summarize what we're speaking, I mean, it's, uh, how important is a notary um, in the legal system in Spain is one of the main pillars in the legal system in Spain. Most of the important documents that comes into a life of a person uh, goes through a, not a public notary. So it is important to know and um, um, what they can do for the citizens, for the society. It's, um, and it's important for us, it's been really good for us to, to show 
um, um, this importance, uh, and I'm sure people have explained as the international clients um, want to know which is the situation, which is the the the, the position of Anatoly in Spain. So it's been really good to to and enjoy to I mean to to invite and have as a guest uh, Juan Luis because it's been spectacular uh, to have a, a public notary in the webinar. And just to summarize again that what is being said also discussed is uh, of course the importance of uh, of instructor independence law. I mean we've been said that is is do things by the book. The starting point to entering in Spain uh, um, should be a lawyer which can be um, showing to you the immigration issues, taxes, um, uh, buying a property, and many other things, and many other legal matters that may occur in your life in Spain. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, we before we go, uh, we've got one here, uh, Rosie Snyder. Um, thank you, uh, Rosie, for your very nice feedback. Uh, we try to, to give transparent information and I'm happy you, you, you really appreciate it. I would recommend you to contact Michael. Uh, Granada is in Andalucía, right, Galera? And, um, and I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So if you ever decide to come over to Spain in Andalucía, uh, contact Michael. And if you ever decide to come to Costa Blanca, just uh, contact Pedro. Um, I would like to thank you all for your time. I know it's precious, uh, especially today, Juan Luis, who he never hesitate to, when we said we could do one webinar to give a little bit of light on this, he said straight away, yes. And I'm very, very happy he, he made this step. Um, so thank you for that, uh, Juan Luis. Uh, to Pedro, Pedro, thank you very much. You know, you're always busy and very tight with time. And thank you for taking uh, this opportunity to, to explain. And Michael, uh, Michael Davis is, is an um, uh, ex-honorary British consul. I know he's very busy as well in Marbella, Maria and Mohaka. I know he's tight, but thank you again, Michael, for sharing all this good information and, and uh, assisting on the webinar. Now we're gonna just uh, leave a video now. Uh, Juan Fran um, is gonna share it with us. And then after that, uh, we will be pretty much finished. So over to you, Juan Fran. Trust is vital when you're in another country. If you want to buy a home, set up business relationships, or apply for a residence permit, you need to be able to count on the best independent legal aid. Peggy Fair and Heredia is an international firm of lawyers with over 20 years experience and one single aim, for you to live at ease in Spain. In order to give you a clear, streamlined and fast response, we work with a cross-disciplinary team of professionals specializing in the main legal fields, civil law, foreigners affairs, business law, tax and financial law, and international law. And to ensure that you're kept informed and up to date with everything, we have six offices on the Eastern Coast. Whether you're from here or abroad, we will always stand by you and speak your language. Our relationship is based on openness, professionalism, and a commitment to finding legal solutions in your best interests and for your peace of mind. Ayether and Aredia, international lawyers. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be seeing you again on next Thursday. Um, thank you again and have a good evening. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.